As a record producer, Dre is known for spending the majority of his time creating beats in the studio. But what's it like working with him? In the studio, working with Dre, there, there's, as with anybody, there's two sides. There's, he's being a real easy, mellow, easy going guy, go with the flow. I mean, that's great. But then sometimes we come across uh, an idea that he's trying to come with, up with that he can't really communicate or, or an artist that's being difficult. And, you know, and with every project it gets difficult. But for the most part, Dre's a easy going, you know, very articulate, knows what he wants and, and won't stop till he gets it. When we're working on a track and it's for a specific thing, um, and you're coming up with stuff, Dre's, you know, got his radar on and he knows exactly what needs to happen. He might not, he's not trying to limit you, but at the same time, he's just trying to provide a certain thing for that artist. Um, so it's just very focused and he comes in there and once he hears what it's supposed to be, he instantly, that's it. You know, he makes that decision and that's what we go for. The vibe light is usually really chill. Uh, depends on who we're working with, uh, which artist, or if it's just Dre himself. You know, people come in, there's always, you know, Hennessy flowing, there's always, you know, Pepsi and Hennessy. There's always, you know, a little bit of weed going, you know, a little get the party relaxed, you know what I mean, and a couple of drinks. Kind of two different environments for certain days when Dre is just, let's just jam, essentially, in the studio and see what happens and just kind of stockpile everything onto, uh, you know, onto DAT tapes. And then there's other days where we're very focused on, we have a, a mission, so to say, that we have to do. But Dre, you know, it's, it's quite amazing. I think people, you know, probably have this certain persona of what Dre's like, but, you know, in the studio, he's, he definitely is who you think he is, but there's many facets to him, a lot of different areas that he covers. Most of the time, I have to get talked into um, performing on record or, or you know, performing in the videos and what have you because I don't think that's my thing, and I don't think that's where my true talent lies. Uh, well, what happens is when we lay the vocals down is initially we we'll, it'll be like a party vibe. There'll be a bunch of people in here vibing, getting the idea, and then uh, once Dre is ready to do his vocals, basically everybody has to leave. So that there's, you know, because Dre is such a picky person, he's always trying to do push himself vocally and get his tone and do this and that, that he doesn't want anybody to be around to give him a feedback when he's not ready to get feedback. So what he'll do is we'll come in and we'll go in the vocal booth and uh, it'll just a lot of times just be me and Dre. He'll come in, we'll play the beat and I'll just loop the beat and we'll punch one line at a time, two lines at a time until he feels comfortable with it until, you know, maybe an hour, two hours later we have one verse. Then we'll work on the course a couple hours later, you know, so it might take us eight hours to do a song. He'll take it home, study it, study the flow, the what he likes, what he doesn't like, and then the next day we'll come in again and do the final vocals. Dre is constantly at the board, kind of, you know, working sounds, working the kick drum, working the snare, EQing things. I think for Dre, uh, when he does his vocals, he's never been a fan of his voice. He's, ne he's never, he's always openly said he doesn't like his voice. And uh, so I think for him being in there, it just might be hard with so many people around him to, to really do him because everybody loves it, but you know, he doesn't. So it's just like, it's, I think for him, it might be nerve wracking to, you know, to just always do it and, and you know, do his vocals. Dre's albums have always been known for their outlandish cover designs. However, for his second album, Chronic 2001, Dre wanted something different. Jason Clark is well known throughout the industry as a leading album sleeve design specialist, and the man Dre chose for the job of creating artwork for Chronic 2001. Well, uh, Stan Musley is a photographer we brought in to shoot the, the monitor shot. And basically, it was something that he had done as a spec. A lot of photographers do that, where they will come up with a concept and they'll take a picture and they'll send it out to ad agencies and stuff like that. And uh, this guy is actually, like I said, he's an ad photographer. He, you know, he, he has never shot music before. So uh, we contacted him. Was like, listen, you know, we like this concept you've come up with. We'd like to apply it to an album package. Um, what do you think about that? First of all, and secondly, would you be interested? So he was like, uh, yeah, and he flew down from San Francisco, that's where he's based out of. And uh, he's done some stuff that you probably have seen in advertising. I mean, this guy is huge, and uh, 
he was very thrilled to do it. And that's where the, the original idea came from. And, uh, you know, we put our twists on it, obviously, but that's the basic idea. Although Dre liked the original Girl on Monitor design, he asked Jason to go with a much simpler plain black album cover. A few people have said to me they would just buy it for that cover. Because I do keep it in my book, and like I said, basically, the girl was half naked. I mean, come on, you know, sex sells. I mean, he sold six million units. I mean, how many more can you really sell? You know, I mean, you know, it's hard to argue with that. I still think it would have been another mill, but, you know, whatever. Another chronic 2001 artist that rap lovers were eager to hear was Dr. Dre's latest protege, Eminem, who was about to set the world on fire. You know, I'm just basically there as a hype man for Dre. You know, I just try to warm up the crowd until Dre comes out. Once, <laughs> once Dre comes out, I, I become chopped liver. And it's like, <laughs> like, okay, yeah, thanks Eminem, but Dr. Dre! I mean, I used to hear like Eminem battling other rappers on the Wake Up Show back in the days when they were on 92.3 The Beat, and Eminem was a white boy rapping, and oh, that white boy, you know, he got some hot stuff. It's cool, but it was, nobody was looking, checking for him. He was a white dude. Well, what happened was uh, the way the Wake Up Show was set up is, you know, we opened the doors to all new young MCs. He came on that night, and it was uh, Craig G and Juice and a few other more popular freestylers there, but as the show started to go, everyone started to realize this, this crazy white kid that was kind of outperforming everybody else. And after that show was over, his manager, uh, attorney, Paul Rosenberg, said, hey man, this is the most exposure we ever got. Do you mind if we keep coming back? Or you know, can you help us out some more? And I said, no problem, whenever you want. And I think it was about, you know, he came up at least 10, 15 times. And then I saw him one day and he said, man, Dre heard me on the show. And, uh, you know, we had a meeting with him, it went well, I think I'm going sign, to sign to him, so we were proud of him. So after that point, I believe it wasn't until Eminem showed up that everybody got the shock of a lifetime realizing that he was, that he was white, you know. Uh, so that was quite amazing, and I was there the first time that Em kind of strolled through the doors and we just kind of played him some music and he got on the mic that first day. It was, it was quite amazing, it was quite a chemistry right from the very beginning. It's the word. It's like it's to the, work with Eminem. Oh, it's incredible. It's the greatest this, this honor guy. ever. It's the greatest honor ever. Eminem and Dre, you know, like I said, they in instantly had a, a, a spark and instant chemistry. Dre listened to what Eminem had recorded, and it was the Slim Shady EP that he had put out on his own, uh, and you know, wanted to put it out as a full-length record, and was just missing a few songs. So essentially, Dre just said, well, let's listen to some stuff, let's vibe, and, you know, he listened to a few tracks and just started writing, essentially. It was just really simple, you know. And once those songs were done, you know, Dre went back, you know, kind of helped him tweak some of the other older material and put out that record, and, you know, the rest is kind of history in a sense. Dre now lives with his wife Nicole in a gated community in the San Fernando Valley. Although he's now a 20-year veteran of the music business, his career is far from over. I don't think Dre has slowed down at all. As a matter of fact, I think he's escalated, especially since he's had Aftermath and discovered Eminem and so on. I think Dre's probably working harder than he's ever worked in his life, but it certainly is paying off. That Dre is working as hard now as I believe he probably worked when he was 16 and 17 years old. And the amazing thing about it is that, is that he doesn't have to. You know, obviously he's made uh, a great living for himself. Um, he doesn't have to worry about the money. It's all about the love of music and the love of trying to do something new. You know, he pushes himself, he pushes the musicians that work with him. The musicians, uh, we've been there like six, seven years. It's the same musicians when he first left Death Row. Hip-hop culture now dominates our media. 
This trend looks set to continue for years to come. And one of the biggest players on the field is undoubtedly a black multi-millionaire producer, performer, record label boss and enemy of the establishment, known to fans across the world as Dr. Dre. He just, he gives you what you want, there it is, I'm going to change it two or three times, I'm going to take it up, take it down, I'm going to take you home, okay? His records are never, never complicated, you can always find the hook. A lot of rappers have excellent lyrics that, that Dre is produced for, but what gets Dre over is the content of his music, the beats, okay, the feeling that you get from something that he produces. It's something that you can close your eyes on and you can actually feel it here. I think Dre is probably the most important producer uh, in hip hop history besides going down to early 80s of uh, Marley Marl and a few other, other old school heads that really laid the foundation. I think that uh, Dre brought a West Coast sound in the late 80s that changed hip hop worldwide. So I definitely think he's one of the most important producers of, uh, of hip hop history. Dr. Dre looks set to continue influencing music for a long time to come. And he stays flexible and he makes you go, damn, damn, you know? He just pushes himself. He hears music that's out there and he feels that music can just be that much better. I think that Dr. Dre has become an inspiration for young kids growing up here because uh, Dr. Dre is a rags to riches story. Dre's probably going to go down in history as, as one of the hugest contributors to, you know, the 20th century as well as now the 21st century. Forget about anything else you've heard. When it comes down to it, it's still Dre. We love the old days, they play with y'all. Reservoir game hard, we ain't playing with y'all. The homies got the Hennessy. So good. The homies got the sticky green. So good. The homies know these bitches free. So good. So good. So good. The homies got their money right. So good. The homies going out tonight. So good. The homies might have to fight. So good. So good. So good. So good. Now what you want to do? So good. Now what you want to do? So good. Now what you want to do? So good. So good. The homies got the Hennessy. So good. The homies got the sticky green. So good. The homies know these bitches free. So good. So good. So good. The homies got their money right. So good. The homies going out tonight. So good. The homies might have to fight. So good. So good. So good. So good. Now what you want to do? So good. Now what you want to do? So good. Now what you want to do? So good. So good. The homies got the Hennessy. So good. The homies got the sticky green. So good. The homies know these bitches free. So good. So good. So good. The homies got their money right. So good. The homies going out tonight. So good. The homies might have to fight. So good. So good. So good. So good. Now what you want to do? So good. So good.